Let's talk Tech Thursday. One in six people with COVID-19 become seriously ill with breathing difficulties as one of the symptoms they're likely to face. With Ghana's cases going over a thousand with nine deaths, issues of life support equipment have become topical. One of them, respirators or ventilators, have been the go-to equipment in COVID-19 intensive care. Sadly, the country doesn't have that luxury because they're very expensive. But there is hope. An engineering student at KNUST or engineering students at KNUST have developed a low-cost automated ventilator. On Tech Thursday, Love FM's Kwesi Debra speaks with people behind that innovation. A group of researchers led by the president of the Institute of Safety, Disaster and Emergency Studies, Dr. Ishmael Norman, decided to undertake research on all risk emergency preparedness in Ghana's hospitals. And do you know what they found? Only 45.5% had respirators. Of course, Kofanochi Teaching Hospital is having some, Kulubu Teaching Hospital is having a number of them. What about? the district hospitals. The least said about them, the better. Students at KNUST have, for the past two years, been working on how to write a good ending to the story captured in the Ghana Medical Journal. Professor Mark Adumasamwa is Provost College of Engineering. Most of the district hospitals and community hospitals, they, they lack ventilators. So we initiated a project with the University of Michigan to build um, locally made ventilators. Hospital grade ventilator costs between 130,000 cities and 300,000 cities. The team put together by Professor Mark Adumasamwa has been thinking of less expensive ventilators. We felt that if we could get a ventilator that would have the basic functions for human breathing, then it will, be, it will go a very long way to help with our health delivery system. The prototype has an initial cost of 20,000 cities, which the college believes will reduce significantly if mass-produced. Professor Kwame Oseb Watin is one of the project coordinators. When you are building prototype, it's not that which you use to price the product on the market, but rather all these problems we are going through, once we are done, we would have prepared templates and we can then mass produce. When you are mass producing, you do a whole lot at a time and so you are able to bring the price down. Ashanti Regional Clinical Engineering Manager, Ghana Health Services, Eric Sakimensa, do is impressed of what is likely to be the first automated ventilator to make his way into Ghana's intensive care wards. He knows additional functionalities will be apt. For a life support device like a ventilator, you need to check something we call the SPO2, the amount of oxygen in the patient, we need to know. Also, it's a monitoring device, so we need to get its temperature, check sometimes the ECG, and then we have some technicalities that we call something like the tidal wave, we need to know all these things. And when we discuss with them, they made us aware that they have all these things in the prototype document. Professor Oseb Watin has therefore been taking notes. What we'll be adding to it is that it's, as it is, it's already automated, but still there are certain functions we could still automate further. Because we are thinking that you wouldn't have, uh, uh, some people may not be in so critical a condition, such that they may be aided with the you know, ventilator for a while and then at the time they regain uh, their composure and are able to breathe, then the machine itself should be able to sense that now the person is okay so it can go off by itself. Or if the person is okay and is on the person, at the time that the person begins to struggle, it should be able to detect and kick in so that it, it helps. These are the fine tuning in terms of automation that we are thinking about now. Yeah, and uh, in addition to this, we are thinking of other adding devices that could also monitor the signals from the body, like the electrocardiograph. The college says the ventilator, which is 95% complete, will be fully functional in two months' time, but 
will require financial support. For Joy News, Kwesi Deborah. Well, before I go, I do have some of your messages here. Let's see if we can quickly run through them. This one says, food prices have increased abnormally. I have in this pandemic times. Officials shouldn't close their eyes and ears as if they don't know. A bowl of gari that used to sell at five CDs is now selling at 10 CDs in Nkwanta. Their Greek minister should send private investigators into, investigators into the various markets to find out prices of food stuff. Dr. Kotor Frie, the food minister, the food and agri minister is lying. Uh, f five fingers of plantain cost five cities from Frank in Mataheko. Most of you have sent similar messages. Unfortunately, I've run out of time.